Hello, my brothers and sisters. Greetings to you wherever you may be. We greet you in the name of God, our Father, and Jesus, our redeeming Savior. We thank God for the innocent blood, the innocent shed blood of Jesus, who came to redeem all mankind. Certainly, it is a pleasure to be in your presence once again. Thank you for tuning in and listening. Um, we find that there's so much in the gospel writ, in, the, in the, the, the holy writ, I should say, in the word of God. Uh, it's so amazing to see that the Bible has been a, a book that has lasted through the times. It's the um, top selling book, no doubt, and has been for many years. The, what amazes me most is that uh, in this Bible, uh, this book as we refer to it, it will tell us not only of the history, but it will bring us current with now and the future. So we've had the privilege of teaching about the seven prophecies that must be fulfilled before the second return or the second coming of Jesus. Might I add that Jesus, evidently, his return is not only imminent, but it is closer than perhaps we may realize. With all the catastrophic events that have been happening in this world today, and in particular here in the United States, it is most important that we, as people of God, that we don't allow our love for Christ to wax cold. This is not the time that you can be dormant uh, under the surface. But certainly this is the hour that your Christianity or the Christ in you should be more visible than ever before. We should be about the Father's business when in the lost, because time is running out. And certainly, I don't want it to be said that I didn't fulfill all of the things and the works and the uh, deity, the things that God has given me to do when God makes his return or when he comes back for me, I want to be exhausted. Having given out everything that I could have done with the gifts that God has given me. Therefore, I take this opportunity to encourage all of us, Christ-like Christians, followers of Christ, to take more of an approach about the Father's business. Get about the works, the things that he's called you to do. Because even from these studies, Christ's return is most imminent. Now, today, we will finish up or give the final uh, prophecy, the final prophecy that has to happen before the return of Christ Jesus. And in the study of these seven, we have found out that most 
all of the prophecies have been fulfilled except for maybe two, I say two, maybe no more than three, that had to come to pass in this time, in this era, in this hour that we are currently living in. So the seventh prophecy, which is instant worldwide communications and God's final witness. This seven prophecy could not have happened until or th this end time prophecy, this particular end time prophecy couldn't have happened until this era, this modern day era that we are now living in. The reason for it is because we now have the availability of worldwide communication. So we find out, let me get to the word of God. We find out that these things were already spoken and prophetically spoken. They were already prophesied of this coming time by the prophets Zechariah, Daniel, Jesus. They all prophesied of the seven things, the seven events that must come to pass before the second coming of Jesus. Jesus, while leaving the temple with his disciples, uh, gave the end time prophecy He told of the, the church that are being destroyed. His disciples was talking about how beautiful it was. You've heard this in previous teachings or previous sessions. But it is the same thing that pushes into the future. This particular prophecy is what leads us into where we are now. So might I say that it all starts or started concerning Jesus with the sermons on Mount Olive, or should I say the Olivet prophecies or the Olivet Discourse. And the books of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the three of them was followers of Christ. These books in the Bible are known as the Synoptic Gospels. They are synoptic gospels which each of these three authors or these three disciples whom were handpicked by Jesus, they all give their own version. They were eyewitness to the prophetic revelations with Jesus on the Mount of Olives. So the three of them, having an eyewitness, been able to see everything that was transacted, everything that was done, the three of these particular disciples, having the eyewitness, gave their own account of what happened. 
they gave their own version. Being at the same place at the same time, witnessing the same thing that was going on, it simply means that their viewpoint was synonymous or in this case, it was synoptic because they saw the same. They were there at the same time. They saw everything and witnessed everything that was said. So they had the privilege of being the same, which makes it the synoptic Gospels. But this is another end time Bible prophecy that could not be fulfilled until this time that we're living in now. This particular prophecy um, is referred to as the era of instant worldwide communication. What does that mean? Instant worldwide communications and God's final witness. Instant worldwide communication, meaning that you can pick up your phone at any given time, any given hour of the day or night. You can pick up your phone and dial any other part of the world or any other country. You have the privilege, you have the uh, distinct pleasure at your every disposal to pick up the phone and you can dial any other nation or any other country at any other time. The other side of that is that we have what is called internet, meaning that you can visually input on and see what's going on from the country that you are in. You can see what's going on in foreign countries. Also, the internet is much more Vast. I don't want to say complicated because there are many minds that are brilliant that are able to facilitate on the internet. So worldwide communication is not foreign any, anymore. This prophecy had to wait. I don't want to say wait, but I'm saying wait. It had to wait until this hour and this time before it could actually be fulfilled. Well, my brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you today that we are living in the end time prophecy where we have instant worldwide communication and God's final witness. The question has been asked before, are we that generation? Jesus said in the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, he said, after all of these things shall come to pass. After the, all these things shall come to pass that I prophesied, that he prophesied on the Mount of Olives, the Olivet Discourse. He said, after all of these things shall come to pass, then just know I will make my return in one generation. So that means that we have to be, I believe, we have to be living or we have to be that particular generation. Therefore, Jesus' return is vastly approaching. Uh, Jesus in this major end time prophecy in the books of Matthew, Mark, and Luke Jesus gave a descriptive outline of the coming disasters. Listen, he prophesied, he prophet, uh, uh, prophetically spoke about things, disasters. What are disasters? Storms, disasters, famines, disasters, wildfires, disasters. Mm. Might I said racism throughout this land, the things that we're experiencing now. Jesus spoke 
listen, and gave a descriptive outline of the coming disasters that would happen on this world scene that would become more increasing prevalent, increasingly prevalent, meaning that these things that will come to pass would be more widespread in this particular area that we're now living in. It would become more widespread and the magnitude, the impact of these disasters would increase in frequent tenacious embellishment would be to the point that the world would be shaken with fear. The things that are currently beginning to matriculate, the things that are coming that, 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 that we're seeing on a daily basis, the things that we're seeing and things that are beginning to happen, just know this is the beginning of sorrows. That's what Jesus said in this 24th chapter of Matthew. This is the beginning. This is the beginning. In the beginning of sorrow, we know, let me point out, that there will be tribulation and there will also be the great tribulation. Uh, that's another sermon. But we're living in this hour and this time that, 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 that man cannot afford to miss God. Man cannot afford not to have a relationship, a pure, honest, holy relationship with the Lord God. And Jesus, through his redemptive blood, as our Savior, Sin brings about consequences. Sin is a reproach to a nation. And when you have a rebellious nation, a rebellious people, that is the time that if we don't repent hurriedly and repent, of our sins and our fault. That is a time that there is a woe that has been announced, a woe from, from God to the earth because we have taken a stubborn approach and refused to repent. So these prophecies are the evidence of the approaching woes, W-O-E-S. The fulfillment of these prophecies, uh, the instant worldwide communication, having the availability to speak and to do as you please at any given time, of the day or night, have an availability to do so. All of these things is just a sign which has already been prophetically spoken by the prophets and in particular, Jesus. So the world will be shaken The world will go through catastrophic changes that will bring about fear to many, or should I say all nations, to, many, to all people. Well, what proof do you have of that? Turn with me to Luke chapter 21. 
the gospel according to Luke chapter 21. And let's read verse 26. Verse 26 says, if you have it, follow me. Men's hearts failing them for fear. Men's hearts failing them for fear. What does that mean? Heart attacks. More so now than ever. Men's hearts failing them for fear. And for looking after these things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heavens, the power of heaven shall be shaken. That's the King James Version. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven. Listen, my brothers and sisters, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. The New International Version, NIV, in that same scripture text, in that same verse, it says people will faint from terror. They will faint from terror. They will faint from fear. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world. They will faint from terror, meaning from fright, from fear. They will faint from terror, apprehensive. Of what is coming on the world. For the heavenly bodies, listen, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. That is the new international, the NIV version. Now let's take a look at the English Standard Version, see what it says about that verse. It reveals and says, people fainting with fear and with forebodying of what is coming on the world. Let me read that line again. People fainting with fear and with forebodying forebodying of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens, listen, there it is again. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. The powers of the heaven. Now, let's talk about that. The powers of the heaven includes any influence of power. Any influence of power. Inspiration, gift of the spirit, power of the priesthood, and etc. All of these things which is governed by God and operates on our behalf. The unlimited powers of heaven, this power, the power of heaven will be shaken. This is the prophecy concerning disaster and the sign of disaster. The sign of these things, how will you know it? The prophets or the disciples rather asked Jesus, how shall we know these things? So this is the seventh prophecy. That the prophets or that the disciples are asking, how shall we know these things? And Jesus replies, instant worldwide communication and God's final witness. Only with the proliferation 
of newspapers and other forms of mass communication that this would become remotely possible. Listen, through newspapers, other forms of mass communication, mass communication, mass, global, other forms, newspapers, television, CNN, MSN, I believe it is. I don't even watch them. But anyway, um, all of these, the television, the internet that gives out daily news uh, 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 comes to my phone every day of the current events. These all are mass communications. But it couldn't happen until this time. So now it is remotely possible. Yet the level of awareness, listen, yet the level of awareness and consequent fear in many that Jesus speaks of implies an even greater availability of information possible only since the development of rapid electronic communication. My brothers and sisters, isn't this the hour that we are living in? Some people say, well, Jesus is not real. God is not real. Well, can I ask you something? How much more proof do you need? For the man of God, our redeeming Savior, to speak on these things that are occurring in this hour, that are happening right now, how much more proof do you need when he spoke centuries ago concerning the now? Still wondering if Jesus is real, if God is real. How much more proof do you need than the prophet Daniel and Zechariah in the Old Testament, the Old Testament prophets that spoke on these very different things and gave us events that had to be, uh, 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 that had to come to pass, events that had to happen. I believe it's Daniel talking about Israel becoming a nation in 1948. All of these things have matriculated, have come to the fruition. These prophecies are now truthful. And certainly, we live in the hour that these various different things, disasters, right now, we're having a storm on the coast. That's a disaster. Last week, uh, it was more about the wildfires in California, which led up into a police shooting of a young black man, racism, and all of these appetites that's going on right now. Disaster. And it says in the text in the Bible that during this time, 26th verse of Luke, men's hearts will begin failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Uh, with the advancement of technology of the last few years, just the last few years with the advancement of, the, of technology, don't you know the world can be destroyed by one button because of technology? Don't you know the human race can exterminate itself. I believe that was number one of the prophets that would be fulfilled. Don't you know the human race can exterminate itself? 
simply by electronics. And that's what it means by instant. Worldwide communication. You cannot have worldwide communication without electronic or something that makes it happen. A gadget, as some would say. But with the advancement of technology of the last few years, it has made it possible for the events in Revelation 11. Now listen here. This is where we're going. It has made it possible for the events in Revelation 11 to occur, which is for the people around the world to see the fate of God's final two witnesses. Let's go over to the book of Revelation. Will you turn with me to Revelation chapter 11? Many of you all have been waiting for me to get the revelation. Well, I'm here now. I'm here now. I hope my brother, my dear friend, like a son, Harold Barber is listening. Steve Hearn, those of you all that are very knowledge to the book of Revelation. Now, let's talk here for a minute. In the old church, many times um, in my coming up, in my rearing, many of the preachers did not get into the book of Revelation because, quite frankly, one or two reasons. Number one, um, having the full understanding. Revelation is not a book that you can just dive into. You got to know the symbols. You got to know about the beast. You got to know about the churches. You got to know about all of the things that Jesus speaks to John while he was on the island of Patmos. That's coming. So stay tuned. But here in this 11th chapter, uh, it follows on the heels of a brief assertion that the Gentiles will possess the temple. Listen, that the Gentiles will possess the temples out of court and trample Jerusalem for 42 months. 42 months the Gentiles will possess the temple will possess the temples out of court in Jerusalem, the Gentiles, and trample Jerusalem for 42 months. And it is within these scriptures we learn of the two witnesses, the two witnesses that God will authorize to prophesy during those 42 months. Prophecy has everything to do with revelation from God. And it is always God's message to the prophet, to the people. And it is always God's time. That's why I always say, and I preach a message sometimes, that seasons and time belong to God. The two witness, reminiscent of the other Bible, or should I say the other biblical prophets, like Elijah, Elijah, and Elisha, they, these two witnesses will carry God's final warning to the world in the last three and a half years leading up to Christ's return. Let me repeat that. These two witnesses, and they paraphrase and said, remnants of other biblical prophets. In other words, these two 
they, 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 well, in some way, almost compare them to, but not really comparing, but more so in reference to um, Elijah, J-A-H, and Elijah, S-H-A. So they paraphrase and they compare them that these two witnesses will carry God's final warning to the world in the last three and a half years leading up to Christ's return. Now stay with me here in the book of Revelation. This is where we be- began to read on. Verse 3. Read with me. And I will give you, I will give power unto the two witnesses. Listen. The two witnesses, or the two witnesses in prophecy, 42 months. And he says, I will, verse 3, and I will give power unto my two witnesses. Witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. They will prophesy they will prophesy. They will prophesy a uh, thousand two hundred and three score days. That's verse three. Then we skip to verse seven of Revelation chapter eleven. And when they shall have finished their testimony, listen, listen. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them. The beast out of the bottomless pit will make war, will engage in war. Against them. And we'll overcome them. And eventually, they will kill them. Verse 8. And their bodies will lie in the street of of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified verse 9 and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half three and a half days and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in the graves They're walking around looking at their dead bodies and won't allow their bodies to be put in the grave. That's significant. Verse 10. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets Tormented them that dwell on the earth. A word that you might want to jot down. These two witnesses, these two men of God, did not meet their death. Until they finished their testimony. 
What does that mean? The servants of God, what that means is that the servants of God will live until his or hers appointed work is done. So the two witnesses cannot die until they have completed their ministry assignment of prophesying. They didn't die until it was over, until they completed their assignment of prophesying for 1,260 days. The beast that ascends from the bottomless pit is likely to be the first beast of Revelation 13. I want you to take note of this. We have to go here. And he is often referred to as the Antichrist, which is an evil person whose origination is traced back to the bottomless pit. The beast or the beast is always, they are empowered by Satan. The beast wages war against the two witnesses, conquers them and kills them. Yeah. Even with their death, it is sobering and encouraging to know that we appear to be living in these times and, the, and that we are the generation, that we are the generation that will ultimately witness the most important event that will take place in all of mankind. And that it, event is the return of Christ Jesus. Now turn back with me to Luke 21 and 28. Let's go back to the Gospel of Luke. Chapter 21 and 28. And this is what Jesus says. And when these things began to come to pass, then look up. Lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth now. Let me read that again. Now, when these things begin to happen, look up, lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. My brothers and sisters, at any moment, at any time, any moment, these things that have been prophetically spoken is coming to pass. Wow. In some terms, some may look at it like we're living in on the edge of darkness. But to every believer, to every one of us, all of us followers of Christ, it's not the edge of darkness, for it's the beginning of the bright morning star. It's the beginning of the brightness, the hour, because Jesus is coming back for his church. He's coming back for his people, coming back for his bride, his church, his people without spot or wrinkle, without blemish. The question is, are you one of those? If you don't know him, there is no better time than now. If you don't know Jesus, if you don't have a right relationship, there's not a better time than now. It's a simple task. Repent of your sins. How do you repent? Just say, Father, forgive me. And from this point, will you take my life, take my hand, lead me? I don't want to be lost. It's just a simple task, just a simple words. It is the denunciation of satanic works of the deities of the darkness, the things that you've done sinful things, 
but it is the proclamation, the announcement of Christ Jesus as your Savior. Simple. Father, here I am. Forgive me for what I've done and the things that I've done, the things that I thought that were not like you. Forgive me. And will you take me by the hand and show me your way? My brothers and sisters, you be blessed until the next time. Hopefully, we'll come back and begin to unfold the book of Revelation with you. God bless you until we see you again. Peace. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier. Have some church. Put your feet down. Stomp and pat. Come on. Let's have some church. 